What do we do about the Supreme Court, though? Well, you know, Ed Markey has a solution. Ed Markey has a solution for the Supreme Court. And here is what he intends to do. We have to get the vote. We have to give these guys the ability to do so. Check it out. He feared what the country's reaction would be to the Republican judges on the Supreme Court revoking a constitutional right, revoking women's right to control their own bodies. And of course, there was no need for those barricades. There was no violence. There was no uh, demonstration that needed to be controlled in some heavy law enforcement way. It was, that was a decision that the Republican-controlled Supreme Court was only able to make after the most political court packing schemes we have ever seen. Republicans would not even give a confirmation hearing to President Barack Obama's last choice for the Supreme Court, saying that a year just wasn't enough time to confirm a Supreme Court justice. And then Republicans rushed through the last of the three Trump appointments to the Supreme Court in the last three months of the Trump presidency. This Republican court packing has given us partisan justices eager to toss aside decades of precedent to satisfy their deep pocketed right wing special interest benefactors. In the years since the Republicans hijacked the court, the American people have suffered at the hands of its illegitimate conservative supermajority. Massachusetts Democratic Senator Ed Markey has introduced legislation to expand the Supreme Court by adding four seats to create a 13-member Supreme Court, one for each of the country's courts of appeals. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts. Senator, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, what is your case for expanding the court? Uh, it's a pretty clear case. Um, in 2016, the Republicans allowed the seat of Justice Scalia to remain vacant for 422 days, uh, denying Barack Obama his ability to have Merrick Garland confirmed, saying that it was a sacred principle that uh, justices should not be confirmed during election years. Then in 2020, just before the election, um, with um, uh, Justice Ginsburg passing away, all of a sudden, there was no principle. And within 10 days before the election of 2020, uh, they confirmed Amy Coney Barrett. So they stole two justices. They've created uh, an absolute illegitimate far right wing Supreme Court uh, that is poised to overturn rights uh, that have been enshrined in law for generations. Uh, and this is a clear and present danger to our country because this is the hand picked court of uh, the heritage uh, and other groups uh, that have sought to have this control that will go back 50, 60, and more years uh, in order to take off the books protections that Americans have taken for granted. So your legislation uh, calls for 13 Supreme Court justices, which is a numeric match with the number of circuit courts of appeals we have in the country. We have 13 of those. When you go back to 1869, when they created the nine, legislatively created the nine we have now, that matched the nine circuit courts of appeals that we had then. So you're just updating exactly what they did in 1869. Yeah, we update what they did in 1869, uh, and uh, and we create the 13 uh, seats. Uh, but we also um, reclaim the two stolen seats uh, that McConnell in 2016 and, and Trump in 2020 stole. And then we add two more uh, so that we have appointments that Biden and uh, that uh, President Obama should have been able to make uh, created uh, so that the number goes to 13, which is the number that it should be right now.
And that, that number nine has been with all of us all of our lives, obviously, since it's been there since 1869. And when, a, when the number hangs around that long, I think it gets so set in people's minds that they think it's in the Constitution and can't be changed. There's something sacred about it. Um, the population of the United States uh, in 1869 was 38 million people, less than the number of people who live in the state of California now. Uh, we only had 37 states back then. The the size of the population, the level of complexity in law, all of this has expanded so greatly while the Supreme Court has not expanded at all. Exactly. Originally, there were only six Supreme Court justices. Uh, under Abraham Lincoln, there were 10 Supreme Court justices. As you said earlier, they reduced it down to nine in 1869. So this is a decision made by the United States Congress as to what the appropriate number should be. And given uh, the threat uh, to the rights of the American people uh, from this Supreme Court, uh, it is absolutely imperative uh, that we change that number and we make it possible for us to not wait uh, a lifetime uh, in order mm -hmm. to uh, reclaim these rights. Uh, yes, these justices are there for lifetime appointments, but it shouldn't take us a lifetime in order to correct this historic oversight. No, it should not take a lifetime to change these Supreme Court uh, justices at all. It shouldn't take a lifetime. And again, like he said, two of them were stolen Merrick Garland was stolen. And uh, after, of course, uh, uh, Bader Ginsburg died, they immediately, right before the election, went ahead and put a judge up. This needs to be mitigated for that. But also, I, I tell you what, I think it is ludicrous for nine people to hold the country in its hands. People always talk about uh, the, the three equal branches of government. I'm sorry. Nine people deciding whether a, a law is constitutional or not is not enough. I think every state, I think every state should have the, uh, a, 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 a Supreme Court justice based on its population. I think they should have Supreme Court justices based on their population. And you know what? Appointed by their governors. But I mean, that's not what this, the Constitution says. We still could, however, have 50 of them, and it's controlled by the president as it is written in the Constitution. I would not mind having 50 Supreme Court justices. It's very important. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.